And sitting across me here in her auntie's vintage red 1960s dress is the virtuous tart <laughs> Susan Jane. <laughs> That is the best grin we've had in all the evening. <laughs> now, tell me, I know you've been nominated before for this category, yes. so what does winning this book, or this book award tonight, mean for you? Owning oh, this? Um, well, I don't know, you'd have to, I, I mean, if only you could see my dopamine levels right now, they're doing all sorts of funny <laughs> things in my brain. Um, uh, it means a huge deal, um, not only because those who are nominated, they're all my food gurus, you know, so there was not a chance I thought I'd win. There just genuinely was not a chance. Um, and so uh, to be called up um, and to also to get to thank the people who mean so much to me in the process, um, as so many of the other authors have already alluded to tonight, that a book just doesn't happen. It is a huge, intricate process where publishers and editors and photographers and stylists come and do this crazy dance, and at the end of it, it's a product. And you're very lucky if it's anyway um, reflecting your own very own personal cadence. And in this instance, and my first book, The Extra Virgin Kitchen, it does. It's very much me. It's, it links in with, my, with the kind of perverse sense of humor I have. Um, it's quirky, it's cheeky. Um, um, it's irreverent, and, and they really, they gifted me with this book, um, Aquila Macmillan, that's how I feel it. And, and my, my family gave me space. I was like MacGyver in an apron for a good six months, you know, <laughs> with loads of explosions, and um, although far more foul-mouthed than MacGyver is, of course, in reality. Um, but um, it, was, it, it was unexpectedly a, an opportunity for me to thank everyone involved. When you win awards, what happens is you tend to get the next book out of them. So that's kind of the great thing about it tonight. Nail, <laughs> nail that deal before you leave this evening. Now, it's obviously a great title for your book, and people do enjoy your humour, which is, you know, on the one hand, you're quite an earnest cook, I think, in some ways. But then in other ways, you wrap it up beautifully. I'm just going to give a quote oh, from the book. You. Don't worry, cleaning up your diet doesn't need to involve neon leotards or cauliflower smoothies. No one should be threatened with that. <laughs> How does that quote reflect your style, do you think? Yeah, um, perfectly, I guess, because I'm all about taking the hell out of healthy. So that's just what um, I love to do because um, it, shouldn't, um, it shouldn't be a penitential thing. I hate diets. Um, and do I eat wheat, sugar and dairy? Yeah, of course I do. It, it, it's a book that's free from wheat, sugar and dairy, only because my previous life was obsessed with these categories. Um, and you know, once I was mindful that I ate so much of these particular food groups, a whole different exciting world of new ingredients were opened up to me. Um, and that's what my journey is, just discovering all these ingredients and these crazy ass names and arcane things and health food stores. Um, and that's what I, I have learned to, to foxtrot with in the kitchen. And that this is just a, a book about my journey. And, you know, I'm doing the research, so you don't have to. Who are you writing for? Who's in your mind? Um, it's who I used to be. So 10 years ago, okay. when I was very ill and frightened and nothing seemed to be... Um, uh, happy in my digestive system. It was mm -hmm. like World War III going on. and um, uh, That was a very unhappy time for me and a very confusing time. I didn't know what was going on with my body. Um, I didn't believe in the idea of food intolerances then um, so much as, as knowing that, okay, um, uh, looking at my diet, I was just digging my way to the grave with my teeth. So it's for that person who knows themselves that their diet is junk and are afraid to go for healthy recipes mm -hmm. because they taste like cardboard. This is for them. Now, the layout of the book is very, very important. I have a sister, for example, who brings cookbooks to bed and reads them as if they're yeah. a novel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are you aware of that when you're oh, yeah. compiling a book, that people yeah. do eat them up? Yeah, yeah, you? yeah. I do. I, I, I get really excited when a new cookbook comes out, I'll buy it. Um, and I only have 50 in my kitchen and it's a tight 50. So when I buy one, one has to go out. Um, and sometimes it doesn't make the cut, you see. Um, but I, I do, I, I read them like you don't have to keep them. I read them like a, a fiction book, which is then, you know, passed on to somebody else who will enjoy it. Um, and I think that's what, that kind of transition still hasn't quite happened at a bigger scale. Um, treating a cookbook like a, a fiction book or any other book that you read it, you flick through it, you, you, you derive much enjoyment even just thumbing through it and getting a few nuggets. And if you do three recipes from that book in a year, that's a good success. It's a great 10, 20, 25 quid to spend. Now, what's great is that usually people don't look anything like their cover. <laughs> <laughs> Hold that 
find yourself there. Look at that grinning <laughs> smile. You are as a smiley there as you are in real life. Susan Jane White, it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. you. Congratulations you and welcome. keep cooking. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>